to friends, family, and fans, it is with unimaginable heartbreak that I am sharing with you that my beloved husband, Cliff Simon, passed away at 12.30 p.m. on Tuesday, March the 9th, 2021. He was at Topanga Beach, California, and sadly passed oh, away after a tragic kiteboarding accident. He was known to most of you on this page as the villain you love to hate, Ball, from Stargate SG-1. But as he said, acting is what I do. It's only a part of who I am. And he was so much more a true original, an adventurer, a sailor, swimmer, dancer, actor, author. There is a gaping hole where he once stood on this earth. He was loved by too many to mention and had a great impact on so many lives. He was an amazing and much loved brother, uncle, nephew, cousin, and friend. He was and always will be the love of my life. And there is unimaginable heartbreak. A small saving grace to this tragedy is that he was doing one of the things he loved most and passed away on the beach near the water, which was his temple. I know this is a shock and will hit hard but we hope you can respect our need for privacy at this time. I'll end with this verse, which Cliff loved and lived his life by. I would rather be ashes than dust. I would rather that my spark should burn out in a brilliant blaze than it should be stifled by dry rot. I would rather be a super meteor, every atom of me in magnificent glow than a sleepy and permanent planet. The proper function of man is to live, not to exist. I shall not waste my days in trying to prolong them. I shall use my time. And uh, Cliff's wife, Colette, uh, submitted that on Facebook on Thursday when most of us found out. Summer, can you hear me? I can. I'm so sorry. No. I had a bit of a technical you're, difficulty there. I apologize. You're, you're okay. I didn't want to do the show without you. It's like, oh, I lost my <laughs> I'm summer. Here. I'm here. <laughs> oh, my God. I need my hand held, guys. Oh, bless you. So. I'm here. Yeah, Linda, um, uh, you didn't, I, I know you said you didn't get to meet Cliff, but. Uh, no, I, I sadly didn't. What has but... it been like going through and because you said you've, you've kind of rediscovered him the past couple of days. Oh my God, yes. So many people have said so many wonderful things and shared so many stories. Um I, uh, the past couple of days, I've, I've been mining the internet for, for good stories, beautiful photographs and memories to share on, on this episode. And, oh my God, I, I really, really missed meeting a stellar human being. Um, I've been laughing and crying and, um, <laughs> I know. Watching Stargate <laughs> and um, discovering projects I didn't know he'd worked on previously. Um, um, David, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, Linda. Um, I just want to let you know the live stream has, has been frozen for a good 10 seconds now. So, oops. Yeah. Not receiving enough video to maintain a smooth streaming. Okay. I see it coming back now. There it is. There it is. Okay, Linda, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it's you're good. Let me uh, let me uh, c continue, Linda. I'm going to go ahead and make some fixes on this end here. Um, just reading everybody's comments and and hearing all the stories have really had a huge impact on me and made me love the Stargate community even more than I did previously. Um, this is a huge family and seeing everybody support each other over the past few days has been an amazing experience. I really love all of you and I'm so glad for all the people in this Stargate family. It's just been... Um, extraordinary to watch everyone come together and uh and celebrate the life of of this person you know i mean um he he knew how to live and and summer you uh you had a chance to meet him uh is it in 2018 um i believe it was 2019 actually um excuse me i think so and that's when we were in chicago correct um i think so yeah because it wasn't last summer it was the summer before and um, but I actually met him at WonderCon before that, um, and he was the very first cast member that I met 
Um, so he was very open arms, very sweet, just the kind of person that you meet and you're automatically, you know, friends with. He, he just seemed, it was just like the perfect cast member for me to meet personally as a first time, <laughs> you know, experience on that side of it. Um, I couldn't imagine anybody being more welcoming and sweet and kind and gentleman-like. And uh, he was just hanging out with us and just having a great time. And um, it didn't feel like you were in the room. Um, well, it did feel like you were in the room with somebody wonderful, but it didn't feel the, the pressure of that. Um, so I, it, it was a great experience for me. He was just a very comfortable person to be around. and he laughed and he joked around and he um, just just was opening to, to everybody. And I'm so, so thankful for the experience that I got to say thank you. Um, that was my biggest mm. thing is I got to tell him thank you for everything that he's done for me. So as far as being a part of the show and me keeping my sanity and <laughs> all of that stuff. So it, it really gives me great comfort that I was able to do that. And I know he has many other fans out there that would have loved to do that. And I promise you on his social media, he was very active and I know he saw a lot of those fans. Um, <laughs> he was, and, he did. Yeah, yeah. I've got, um, uh, my longtime production partner, Jenny Stiven, she submitted a, uh, a clip, as did a few other fans. I'm going to try to see if this is going to work. Um, so I par please pardon me, everyone, if it doesn't. Hi, guys. I'm Please forgive the echo. I'm in a home that's being remodeled. Uh, I met Cliff for the very first time on set, but that isn't really where I had the most amazing deep experience with him. That was in dealing with him with the fans, through conventions, through digital marketing, and then most of all through some of his wellness and book uh, campaigns that I was lucky enough to work with. So I had met him via Fox and MGM when I was asked to go up and work on the sets and do some behind the scenes interviews. And he was one of the very first ones that offered to do some really fun in costume behind the scenes interviews for us, for the fans. And that was really cool. And then he did actually a little extra behind the scenes for a flash game that we created. That was a go old, uh, Hatak vessel and, um, you could play actually as a gold or you could play as Teal'c or you could play as an SG-1 member. And he did a couple of extra little videos for us just for that game, which was really cool. And I just thought that was amazing and really giving of him to do that. And he really got digital. Then after uh, 2009, I think I'd have to ask Patricia Bertrand. I can't remember exactly. She was working with him one on one with his books and his spiritual well being and a CD DVD that he was putting out. And I got to work with him on that. And one of my favorite, favorite memories is meeting him in Culver City at this little coffee shop. And we talked for two to three hours about our backgrounds, where he had come from, why he was doing this, why he really felt that the meditation and spiritual wellness was so important for the whole world to be able to do together. And we talked so in depth about his true belief that we have a universal consciousness, that we're all connected. And I think that that is so important to why we as Stargate fans and family connected with him, because he truly believed that there was that universal Stargate consciousness as well. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because I think that that's why you all felt close to him because he made such an effort and he believed so much in the fandom, so much in the fans. He was ready to do anything, anytime. And when David and I were doing Dialing Home and restarting everything up at MGM, he and Tony and Carmen were some of the first people that we called and he didn't even hesitate. He couldn't wait to do it, wanted to do more. We wanted to do more with him. And I think all of that tracks back to who he was at his core, that 
person who believed in that universal consciousness that we're all connected. So I'm going to hold that close in my heart because if there's anything that I think we can believe in, it's that he's wherever he is now, that he is contributing to that universal consciousness and contributing to the Stargate family. Love you guys. Thank you for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving us a thumbs up with that like button. It will encourage the algorithm to show this to other Stargate fans. Also, please consider sending this to a fellow Stargate friend. I also want to invite you to subscribe to future episodes right here on YouTube. We are a live show, so changes are likely to happen all the time. And if you plan on joining us live, you'll want to be the first to know. Be sure to visit dialthegate.com for the complete guest schedule so you'll know when to join us and ask your very own questions to our guests. See you on the the other side.